welcome back to another edition of NBA Fantasy Ball or DFS edition. Brought to you by <coughs> ResearchOfFantasy.com. I do in fact have the flu, but I'm not smart enough to relax. So here I am bringing you our favorite three plays for Friday, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. Uh, so let's roll all the Irish out. Uh, good luck finding them. So last night, just to do a brief recap, we had Nikola Vukovic, we had DeMar DeRozan, we had Gordon Hayward. All of them finished right around the 28-point mark on DraftKings, obviously <clears throat> DeRozan, uh, which was just a really weird situation. I could see the Orlando game being a blowout, but Golden State hadn't played well at home. It was really surprising to see Toronto just that ill-equipped to play. They're kind of a going concern moving forward um, unless we start getting some production again from Serge Ibaka, who has just been all kinds of awful. So I, I wanted to bring you more analysis on, you know, if those guys were actually good plays or not. The only one I really can say I know for sure that I don't wouldn't have taken a different course with was Hayward. He had at least 14 field goals in his, I mean, he I think he shot like four for 10 they're four for 14. So, I mean, if you adjust that up to where his season average would be, I guess all I'm saying is it wasn't a play where he was so heavily defended that he couldn't get off shots. It was just a situation where the shot wasn't falling. You'll have that. These are human beings. They're some of the best athletes in the world, but they still have off nights. So let's look at who our projection model has. Um, and last night actually worked out really well. Oddly enough, because even with those three guys, they seem to be clustered in a lot of my lineups, and I still had these stacks that had guys like Gasol and Conley um, <clears throat> with Rondé Hollis Jefferson, just a bunch of guys that like I had not really wanted to take too much of, but I changed my exposure from 70% to 50%, so I ended up with a lot more Conley and Gasol lineups, and, and this is DraftKings specifically, so thankfully... Um, that took a night that could have been really piss poor for me and actually made it pretty profitable with hockey uh, as well. So let's start off with James Harden, Jimmy Butler, Harrison Smith, James Johnson, Chris Middleton, Gorgie Jang, Andrew Wiggins, D'Angelo Russell, Jay Crowder, Eric Gordon's kind of a middling, Tyler Ulis is kind of a middling play, Marcus Smart, uh, Anthony Davis, Drew Holiday, DeMarcus Cousins. Now, when I read those, like that's how our projection system turns things out. Very low chance I'm going to run a lot of Holiday because he hasn't been playing well lately. The game is in New Orleans, but it wouldn't shock me, if, especially if Cousins gets in his usual foul trouble. If, you know, this turns into a game that isn't exactly close, you have some Patrick Beverly factor in there. So for me, even though his price is a little better than it has been at 6700 on DraftKings, it's a situation I'm probably going to avoid. So just because they're on this list doesn't mean I'm necessarily going to use them. I heavily edit the guys I end up using because news breaks. This is 940 in the morning, news breaks until 7 o'clock. Some guy might become a value play, or I just don't think that this person's head's in the game like Andrew Wiggins, and they end up getting cut out of my lineups. So let's take a look at a few guys that I really want to touch on today. Um, <clears throat> let me see if I got them. One, two, three. All right, so let's start off with Avery Bradley. Uh, I don't have all the prices because, you know, I'm going back to sleep after these videos. Uh, I do know he's 60... He's 6,000 on DraftKings. We have no Isaiah Thomas for two games because of his knee. This is a plus matchup against Brooklyn. I don't think he's necessarily going to be a the starting point guard. That's not what's going to happen. They're probably going to have Marcus Smart play that role. But Bradley's starting to get his legs underneath him. He's playing better. We know how bad Brooklyn is. But they've been playing close games. That's an important thing. They will rest people tonight because Kenny Atkinson's a horrible basketball coach um so I'm expecting probably Brooke Lopez to be out of the lineup 
So that kind of balances the whole Isaiah Thomas effect. I think Bradley could be good for anywhere from like 28 to 40 fantasy points. I know that there's a lot of mouths to feed, but this is Brooklyn. We saw them turn out some good games last night against the Knicks. Some good fantasy games against the Knicks. So that's the first guy on my radar. The second is Giannis and Tenacumpo against the Lakers under 10K. I think the last time this happened, Giannis was like 11 or 12K on DraftKings because I think this was when he was going through like one of his um, really strong series of plays. He should be extremely popular tonight despite the fact that he has not been putting together. He's been playing like someone who should be priced at like 8, 8,500. And here he is at over 10K on FanDuel, almost 10K on DraftKings. It's a good matchup. I think that the Lakers should be able to hang in just long enough for him to see uh, his fantasy production tick around the 55-point mark. And we know that there's upside into the 60s and 70s if everything falls in place tonight. So he's someone I want to look at. Um, Again, I didn't realize that I was doing this, um, but... I'm not going to hold myself to just offering one player per team if I think the team's in a good situation. I think Avery Bradley's underpriced. I also think that Al Horford at 6100 is ridiculously underpriced. Sure, Marcus Smart might be the guy who is the starting point guard, but Al Horford is a triple-double type player in a situation like this. In fact, he almost hit that mark the last time this team played against Minnesota. I have been concerned about his level of play over the last several weeks. Things seem to be trending upward, and I think you're making a mistake if you don't at least consider him at this price tonight. This is a guy who could definitely end up at that price with eight or nine times value met on DraftKings specifically, probably more towards seven or eight on FanDuel because I think he's like 6,500 there. But, you know, with a lot of players on the slate tonight, a lot of good plays, a lot of people might look at DeMarcus Smart still at a reduced price. You've obviously got Ivica Zubak, Allen Williams. You've got some players who will eat some portion of ownership that maybe Horford ends up a little bit lower owned than he should be. That wraps it up for today. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure to head over to researchfantasy.com, sign up for our mailing list. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Research and Win, and join us again next time.